Peace and blessings be unto all my brothers and sisters out there. All glory given to the Father. He is magnificent in the love that he has for you. If you only take out the time to get to learn him, what is he asking from you? What is he requiring of you? You will have longevity. You will have love. You will have everything you need in this life if you if you hearken to the word of your father, of what he is asking from you. And he's not asking a lot for us to be righteous men and righteous women of Yah. He's not asking a lot of us, family. He not. So uh, it's Friday. It's Friday. It's been a long week hey for my brothers and sisters out there it's saturday for us you know what i'm saying it's been an extremely long week you know what i'm saying monday sunday is our is our sunday is our monday you know what i'm saying and if you work hard all day long week you know what i'm saying six days a week well i don't work on sunday but i work five days a week and it's been a long week it's friday happy friday everybody happy friday everybody i'm good i'm great your father is great you great. Your father is excellent. You excellent. Get all this holiness and just rub it all up on you. Keep it down up in you. Lock it. Lock it. Seal it. Hide it from people. You know what I'm saying? Because these people out in the world, they don't want your father. They don't want him. They don't want to do the things that he wants them to do. They don't want to act like decent human beings even though he done poured his righteousness all on the essence of your soul. But happy Friday, everybody. I hope you have a peaceful Bless Phil weekend. You've been with your brother Jehoshaphat all week long. Hallelujah. Amen. For the Father is worthy. You've been with your brother all week. Shoot, you've you been with your brother for two weeks. You've been chilling with me. And I would like to thank all my brothers and sisters who have stopped by to see Jehoshaphat and our daily topics for the day. You know what I'm saying? I only missed one day this whole week, but your brother was going through it. But other than that, I have done a show constantly. Two whole weeks, y'all been with me, and I thank y'all. You know what I'm saying? Like I told y'all yesterday, this is a two-way street. You know what I'm saying? As much as I can help you, I'm pretty sure you can add on to me some of your greatness as well. You know what I'm saying? The body of Christ, family. The body of Christ. You know what I'm saying? The body of Christ. I can't look good unless you look good, brother. You know what I'm saying, sister? I can't shine without you. I need you doing your job. We need you. We need you, brother. You know what I'm saying? So. So I just hope you take this weekend and be at peace. Respect your father. Get the word up in you. You know 9 o'clock is a prayer hour. You know it's official. It's popping up over here. We magnifying our father's name. It's Friday, y'all. I got this cheese on my face. <laughs> got this cheese on my face. I'm happy. I ain't even got nothing going on this weekend, but I'm still happy. I, am. I can just chill, relax, be with my father, and be good. But family, on a serious note, you know what I'm saying? I hope you have a peaceful, blessed feel. It's Friday, family. It's Friday. Hallelujah. Okay, okay. Mm. <laughs> okay. I'm going to get serious. Hold on. I'm going to get serious. I do got some structure for this day. Now... To all my brothers and sisters out there, I hope that you have a peaceful, blessed, filled uh, Sabbath weekend. I want you to take this time to respect your father, to be righteous men and righteous women before God's eyes. You know what you got to do on this day. You know you got to be resting. That's already on the table. If you if you get his word and soak it down in you, it's so you know I've got to say it. It's so important to sit there and. Just be in remembrance of his promises. Be in remembrance of his laws. You know what I'm saying? Settle on that. Put that deep down in you to meditate on the word of God for this weekend. You know what I'm saying? It's, it's important, family. It is very important. I don't care what you what you think or what you're going through. You're going to need his word to strengthen your, to strengthen your soul. You're going to need that. So I, I just want you to have a peaceful with your family. You know what I'm saying? Get the word of God in you. Be at peace. Be holy. Holy men and women of God, you know your father is righteous, so I, so I expect you to do the same. Everything of him, you know what I'm saying, you got to be the same way. If you say you love God and you say that you are a child of God, you need to quit playing and start acting like it. You know what I'm saying? Play time and on the church is over. You know what I'm saying? Those days is over with. You know what I'm saying? We need strong women, men, children of God. You know what I'm saying? Not to be playing no games up over here. Our people need each other. You know what I'm saying? That faking, that all that is, that's washed up, player. You know what I'm saying? That's washed up. You need to go on somewhere with that. You know what I'm saying? Real men and women of God. So I just want you to be at peace this weekend and do what your father would do. Your father is resting. You know what I'm saying? I suggest you rest. Your father is being holy. I suggest you be holy. Your father is being righteous. I suggest you be righteous. 
and make sure you have one for your boy on the weekend. Now, today's topic, we're going to go ahead and go over the trip that I took out to Allensworth, California. I just want to I want to dedicate this show to Allensworth, California. Now, you've seen the town that I was in and family. It was beautiful. Any direction I might have pointed in was all the same land. You know what I'm saying? It was that. I don't know how big it is. You know what I'm saying? Maybe I need to do some more research on the land that I was to see how many miles it was. But I'm telling you, family, it's not even a lot of land out there. You know what I'm saying? It's not even, well, it's not a lot of cities out there. You know what I'm saying? That city, Allensworth, the next city could have been 75 miles in any direction. So that whole land that we was around, that anywhere you seen me turn was all Allensworth. And what did I tell you? All is out there is all cash crops. You could think of anything that you would put in the ground and try to, to raise up to make money. And that's the only thing that was out there. You know what I'm saying? It was a beautiful family. So we're going to dive into what the older generation say that live here in California because they got a whole lot to say. You know what I'm saying? Let me give you a backdrop on Fresno, California. Okay, the west side is predominantly black in the 80s it was all black you know what i'm saying it was all black it wasn't no other race of people over there but pre previous to that time they called it german town it was all german people who lived over there they did not let black people move into the city from what the older generations of black people tell me out here is that our people live by the raisin vines you know what i'm saying they live by the peach vines they didn't even let us live in fresno they was barely giving us work in Fresno, but we lived in the field in, in tents and camps and camp cities and stuff out on the outskirts of town because of the racism in this city. They wouldn't even allow us to move into the city. So where I come from, the west side, that was predominantly German, but the Germans moved out. You know what I'm saying? In like the 1950s, somewhere around there, the 1950s. So all the black folk, they moved in. You know what I'm saying? Right now, it's about... They say 40% black. I don't think so. Because when I was a little kid, back in the 80s, it was all black, family. All black. Just like that town that I went to. Let's go ahead and get into some of the things that the older black generation say out here about Allensworth. I got it written down. You know your brother. You know how it gets down. It'll take a brother a second. Yeah, I got that I gotta go over with you, but that's only a little bit. That ain't no problem. I talk I talk with the older the olders who knew about the city I visited and they had some things to say about it about it. They said that for for them to run our people out of that town was a slap in the face to, to Allensworth and the brothers and sisters that lived in that city in that that lived in that city to school black people that you can to show black people you can never have a piece of the American pie. So as as I look at the black folk, the older generation that have some knowledge about Allensworth who live here in my city, I, I ask questions and they said that white supremacy and white racism is the only reason why they didn't let them stay there. Just like I told you, they did all these trumped up allegations or whatnot. You know what I'm saying? So the older black people out here, they say that they was slapping him in the face with their racism. Like, look at you black people coming together like the Bible say y'all should. You know what I'm saying? They was doing it big, family. They was doing it on some 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 apostle level out there. You know what I'm saying? They sold all their belongings. They came together. They put all their money. It was financed by black people. Not by our government. Not by no outside uh, uh, identity. That was furnished and funded by all black people they pulled all their resources together to build that town you know what i'm saying like on the biblical standpoint on like the apostleship like they did in the bible you know what i'm saying all together on one accord to build something so no the white supremacists out here in california they slapped general uh allen's worth in the face and closed down and condemned that town and ran the black people out of there that's what the older black generation said now, me personally, if I never went to Kings Canyon Middle School and stayed after school to join the Black Student Union, it's a damn shame to get our own to get our own history. We got to stay after school 
because they didn't have no courses to learn black history while you was in school. They taught me. I had two different two different classes that taught me about Confucius, Buddha, you know what I'm saying, all the Asian culture, but that was the curriculum to learn about our people. I had to stay after school. That's the only reason why I know about Allensworth family. The only reason why I know. I stayed after school for the Black Student Union to get more information about my people. Black power, black love, black peace, black understanding. You know what I'm saying? I was on that in the seventh grade. That's the only reason why I know about it. But y'all older generation out here that do know about it, they said due to white supremacy, that's the only reason why that town is not there no more. Okay, what else did they say? They said that for them to run, no, we went over that. They slapped, they slapped with our people with that racism. You know what I'm saying? That white racism. To show black people that you can never have a, a piece of the American pie. Even if you came together as a people and build, that white supremacy shows you that they destroy the dreams of our elders no matter how hard we tried. So our people, they really was trying, family. I mean, they was really trying. They was really trying. You know what I'm saying? Now, I told you I said that. That my people, they migrated from Oklahoma and they migrated from Texas to get out here. Now, if they would have left that the town alone, being that it was in a vast setting of land, it would have been bigger than L.A., family. You see all of the black folk in the, in the 1960s? In the 1960s, L.A. was, what was it, 60% dominant? It was so black. It was so many black people in L.A. that they called it Chocolate City, family. It was a lot of our folks that was out there. It could have been 70% black, but it was it was damn near 70 to 80% black in the 60s, family. So, if all them black people would have heard about Allensworth, it's building, it's growing, it's thriving. They would have left L.A., you know what I'm saying? They would have left, hold up, we can leave here and start our own. We ain't got to work for these people. I ain't got to clean up your houses. I ain't got to be on your farm. They would have left. All the people from L.A. would have left. All the people from San Francisco would have left. All the people from Oakland would have left. All the people from the, the, the small surrounding cities like Fresno and which I live, they would have left and went to Allensworth and built it up, family. It would have been better than San Francisco. It would have been better than Oakland. It would have damn sure been better than L.A. And it would have been here for our people. But you see this damn white supremacy that can't wait to knock us down to nothing. Our country at its finest form showing you once more again that they can't stand black people. They don't want to see us succeed. They don't want to see us build because if they did and they did want to, we was willing to do all of that back in the day before we start asking them for anything. When your ancestors was asking for reparations and they didn't want to do it, they still built on their own and they still built an empire that dominant society once more again destroyed crumbled burned knocked it down to ashes and rubble because they don't want to see us thrive they don't want to see us being rich people they set up them negroes that you see on tv all you want you know what I'm saying give them a little bit of paper and have them speak for us they don't speak for us you know what i'm saying they don't you know what i'm saying i ain't I ain't got $10 million sitting in the bank account. I'm a regular black folk. I'm pretty sure I can speak on the behalf of my people, especially because I love you. Have you ever heard them say that? Them rich movie stars and actors talk like I do and say things like I say? They are nothing like the, like us. Have you ever said it's, the, it's our job to love our people? That's my job. That is my God-given right, family. That is my God-given right to love you. To love you sisters and brothers out there. I don't care about what nobody say about it. God put us together. And he wants us to work together. He wants us to be together and to build together. But anyway, that's white supremacy at its finest of its hatred. Now you've seen all of Mississippi and Tennessee and Oklahoma and all these other black settlements you know what I'm saying Allensworth was so good that they call it a colony he was really trying to get in the minds of his people he like man this is we call it Allensworth colony like when they came over here and landed on Plymouth Rock he had the same mentality like we could start a whole nation out here just on the state of mind that the colonel had Colonel Allensworth God rest his soul he was a great black man I put that on Jesus Christ's name himself now check it let's go ahead and get back in here Okay, white supremacy showing that they destroyed the dreams of the elder generations no matter how hard they tried. And this is all coming from 
the older black people. I write it, but this is what they're saying. You know what I'm saying? I'm just going off of everything that they're saying. I'm dedicating this to them. You know what I'm saying? I love my elders out here. I love my elders everywhere. You know what I'm saying? We as black people need to express love and stop hating on each other. How can we build something if we hate, if we too busy hating on each other? I don't have time to hate on you, brother. I got time to love you. You know what I'm saying? I don't have time to hate on you, sister. I got time to love you. Now, check this out. And that standing alone, mm -mm, that's not going to work. Standing alone, it's all about me. All I got to do is just worry about me and I ain't got to worry about my people. Psst, I'm not even worried about Negroes like that. I'm not. I'm here for you. I'm willing to build with you. I'm willing to be taught by you, eat with you, learn with you, bleed with you, sweat and tears to build up this community, to build up our empire. I'm willing to do all that. I don't care what they say. Now, what was the next one that was that they were talking about? They said that they made it a, a national park to mock Allensworth and the, and they people of that time. So. The, the black folk out here saying that they closed it down just to mock him like look look at all that hard work that y'all did it's for nothing because we could just take everything that y'all got that's why black folk don't want to come together because they scared that white people gonna take all their stuff away and I'm not talking about the good white people believe it or not there are good white people I just don't think that there's enough of them I, I gotta be honest with my people out there there are some good white people but I'm not even here for that uh, to mock him, you know what I'm saying? To mock him, they closed the white supremacist people closed that town down to mock him. Like, look, you you could try to do all the goodness that you can. We'll never let y'all have. We'll never let y'all build. We'll never let y'all be together. We'll never let y'all prosper. Now, dominant society has been doing it to your people, and look at the state of distress our people in. Well, how great of a people will we be if they just left Black Wall Street alone? You know what I'm saying? If they left Oklahoma alone, if they left Rosewood alone, those are not the only towns that black people tried to create. There are so many different numerous towns from New York City all the way to California. Your people building with their hands, trying to have something, trying to build something for future generations. And you see these white supremacists, they can't wait to knock us down and always taking our stuff, want to steal our glory. But that's all right. God is going to free us. And he going to give us the same chance to build. And what he gives us, ain't nobody going to ever be able to take it away from us unless we start disrespecting the father. And he will disrespect us because he don't care what we think. He don't care how we feel. He care about what we doing with what he has given us and what we choose to do with the blessing. We can either make it a, a blessing for ourselves or we can curse our own selves. It's depending on how we worship him. OK, now what else? It's just a little bit more. But I'm pretty sure I already went up over it. If they would have left our people alone, that city would have been bigger than L.A. If it was left to thrive, all our people of of this day would have made it there, made it there to build with their brethren. So it would have become a major city in California, no different than San Francisco, Oakland, Oakland and L.A. So as I look at our people through the through the line of history, no matter where we built or what great things as a people we accomplish, dominant society always had to come around and kick us out and tear us down and what we build. Okay, I already went over that. You know what I'm saying? That's that's how you know what I'm saying I really I really feel that way about that because if they would have left that town alone, it would have thrived. You know what I'm saying? It was a, a, a former community. My city right now, it's over 350,000 people, and they started off the same way. It was this town I live in was a small farming community started in uh, the late 1800s. You know what I'm saying? But it started real small, no different than Allensworth. The older generation say that they they do not do that to other groups in this country like like that no I'm sorry the older generation say that they do not do that to any other group in this country they don't do it to the Mexicans they don't do it to the Asians they don't do it to the Irish they don't do it to the Hindus just black people now this the the now the same of this 
is that they are the shame of this is that they are still doing this same thing to this day stopping our people from having anything so the older black generations are saying that you can look at every other race of people who live out in california the asian people were given a chance to thrive and grow that's why they got a city they got their own cities in every single city here in the, in here in california the mexicans the mexicans they gave them the chance to grow they didn't try to deplete them they didn't try to suppress them they didn't try to hurt them and as i look at what they do they give them the chance to grow make businesses city everything you know what i'm saying everything they give them everything the irish the, the Hindu, all the other races of people that live in California, they don't try to stifle their production of them trying to build to assemble and to unite. They don't they don't do that. They just focus on black people. This is what the older black generation is saying anywhere, anywhere from 50, 60, 70 years old. They're still with us to this day. This is what they're saying. They don't let black people thrive, build, create, unite organize or nothing out here you know what i'm saying they stop what we do but anybody else either it be mexican asian irish indian whoever whoever they leave them alone why they won't leave us alone and let us build because we was trying to build a great nation a hundred years ago 120 years ago without the assistance of your your sorry government without the assistance of any tax paying dollars with us coming together like the bible said to do you know what i'm saying to be a set of apart people that's what your people was trying to accomplish all over the great United States of America. So I don't want to hear nothing coming out of these white supremacists telling me anything about you need to work harder. We've been working hard for so damn long and it has got us nowhere. We don't work so damn hard that you couldn't even get us to work because you're not trying to help us work now. I'm going to tell you something. Young black people, your people, they had 12, 15, 16 jobs. Now they won't even give you a job. That's why our young people is out doing the things that they're doing because they're not given any opportunities to work. I'm not talking about sorry black people that don't want to work. I'm talking about the ones that is. And there's so many of them that turn into a different lifestyle just because they're not given no opportunities. And don't sit up here on no damn YouTube telling me about no affirmative action because that ain't worked. That ain't did nothing for my people. It was never for my people. It was for white women and gay people don't play with me don't play with me when it comes to history don't play with me when it comes to my people and don't play with me what what has been done through the courses of history with my my people i'm not here to play with y'all at all i'm gonna tell you the truth take it for whatever you want to take it but the truth burns some people up because they can't deal with the facts these are facts this is not fiction this is not no 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 side somebody talking behind the head some smack this is fact and they can't even deal with it Okay, I'm, I'm giving. That's why I ain't gonna say nothing about Libya. You know what I'm saying? I know not. I, if I'm this mad about this, just imagine if I, I told the father, I ain't even gonna say nothing else about Libya. I'm not. Mm -mm. Because if you didn't understand this, the things that I said, like I can, I can do a whole nother hour show on it. You know what I'm saying? Of how fired up I am about it. I'm just saying some of the things, but that's cool. You know what I'm saying? I gave you what you need to know. Okay, now we only got a couple bit more on this list. They said before they would take one of our brothers who was stealing, just being out of pocket, that the police would tell the older brothers of what was done before they took him out and beat him or, or killed him or hanged him on a tree. So to discipline our own in these times, they hanged us or beat us. Now look what the older black generation is saying. They saying that before white supremacists would get one of our youngsters and beat them and kill them and hang them, they would go to a older black, gen a b older, whoever is in con control, whoever is in charge, you know what I'm saying, an older black man. And that white man would tell him, you see a uh, little Bob up over here been stealing my chickens. You better do something to this man or I'm going to take him out and I'm going to hang him. So they gave us that much respect. Your, your grandparents, you know what I'm saying, to where we policed our own people. The white folks would give us the head, the righteous white, it ain't all of them is righteous, but the righteous ones would tell them, hey, little, Jen, little Henry is up over here and he been doing something around town. You better do something to him before we get him and we lynch his ass. So they gave us that much respect to discipline our own people. Now it's nowadays and they don't even want you to whoop your kids. How, how, if you can't whoop your kids, how can you put fear in them not to show their ass out in society and mess up? 
But now they want to take that away from you. Before they had the respect, now they want to take it away from you. Don't listen to these people. You got to do whatever you got to do to keep your babies out of these damn prisons, these correctional facilities and these boy homes and all of that. Because when they get them up in there, they're going to inject them with something that's going to dummy them down and make them lose their damn mind. You know what I'm saying? Think, family. We got to discipline our own. We got to police our own. We got to control our own. See, the Panthers, they know what I was talking about. They police their own people. When drugs came in the community, uh-uh. Uh-uh, you better get the hell up out of here with that. You know what I'm saying? We don't need to be uh, feeding this poison to our children and our babies. So we, as black people, need the capacity to control, to police, to protect, to honor our own people. Listen to what the older black men said. We policed our own self back in the day. And when one of us was slipping, we tuned them up to get them back on the mind that we own. Sometimes our people need to be beat down. But that beating should come from our own people. Then that would be a butt whooping that would be expected and accepted. Now, let's keep on going, family. Only got like two more to go. Okay, now on this one, it says... I say we have the right to discipline our own people. They say that the brothers and the sisters was getting too wealthy and their hard labor and and dominant society could not stomach the fact that they were they were they were black so check this out family now I told you that I was a little farmers town all cash crops you know what I'm saying your people was hard working you know what I'm saying you think these other people out in California picking and doing stuff is doing something great they say California provides a third of the 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 pro the produce of the whole nation at one point, it was all black people providing fresh produce to the whole nation. So your people was out here getting it. You know what I'm saying? Your people was out here picking and doing all kind of stuff, getting all these cash crops, getting all this money, and dominant society, once more again, don't want to see the black people come up. Oh, them sisters, oh, that sister and that brother got a three-story house out in the middle of nowhere in their own city, got a brand new car, got all this good stuff. Oh, no. Oh, no. City, towns, all kind of stuff. Family, it was beautiful. It was great. Hallelujah. Amen. For our Father is holy, our Father is mighty, and His word is true. So, your people, they was in that city, and they was getting it, family. They was getting it. They was getting that money. You know what I'm saying? They was getting that money up. You know what I'm saying? Dominant society. Here these, here these white supremacists go again. They can't be eating like us. Mm -mm. And for the ones that couldn't get off their butt and really make something, you know what I'm saying? They was really mad. You know what I'm saying? They was really mad. You know what I'm saying? Because we was getting it. We was getting rich. Talk about Black Wall Street. We would have been Black Wall Street just on some, some fruits and vegetables, family. Not even talking about all the other products, the products that they made in that town and shipped out of that town. You know what I'm saying? So your people was getting it. And once more again, dominant society don't want to see the black woman and the black man come up off of anything. Now, what else was said? Side note, side note, God will put you in the right place in time. Oh, no, I already did that yesterday. So, um, because I've been sitting on this, but I only got two more. And, and for you to need something to hold on for this weekend, hold on to this fact. If you need just something, and this is not even biblical, to hold on, but it's still what God thinks. You know what I'm saying? It might not come directly out the Bible, but it's dealing with his words. So check this out. In your walk with the Father, you can look toward four things for certain that he will add unto you grace mercy blessings and favors and gifts you need all these things to live a good life oh i forgot you must of all have the protect god's hand of protection on your life and you will be in his blessing so check that out family when you come in when you start serving when you start respecting your father your father's not a respecter of person we all know that we all know that he don't care what you think what you feel he don't care nothing about that you know what i'm saying it's his word his way or no way you know what i'm saying the father don't care about what i think how i feel if i don't do it the way that he wants me to do then i damn my own self you know what i'm saying i condemn my own self but check this out family by you letting god come into your life because you're letting him in you know what i'm saying you chose to serve him he not pushing himself on you. He, he not trying to force you to do something that you won't do. But if you let him in, he's going to give you his grace, his mercy, his blessing and his gifts. And most of all, his hand of protection on your life. And you need that. You know what I'm saying? Meditate on that this weekend if you let him into your life. 
Now, this is just something that I find amazing. And this is why I feel that some of us need, really need to turn to God because I talked about it yesterday about the devil oppressing you. The devil oppresses people so bad in this in this life that they turn to drugs. They turn to addictions. Some of them even commit suicide because they so sad because they don't have the hand of protection of God on their life. And they're being oppressed by the devil. Now, check this out. The only time when someone took their life in Jesus day is if they knew that they were going to die because they their master would kill them for a, a reason or just because they were showing showing they were showing off their power. So suicide was something something nothing nobody or no people did unless they knew someone was going to kill them so look at our day and age people commit suicide all the time but back in jesus day people didn't commit suicide you know what i'm saying the only time a person would commit suicide if they was in trouble with their master and they knew their master wanted to hang them chop off their head or let them fall on the sword you know what i'm saying or you know what i'm saying shoot them with a bow and arrow or impel them or something but People didn't commit suicide back in that day. The devil got people so trapped up these days that they fall in under their impression because they don't let God into their life to where they would take their own life, family. To where they would take their own life. Now, there was suicide. It was. But that person back in the day, he knew. He like, man, just like Paul, just like, let's do a little story of the Bible real quick. Paul was in prison. Um, an, angel, an angel came to set Paul and Barnabas, one of his homeboys, I don't remember who it was, I'm sorry, at this junction of time right now, but one of his one of his fellow apostles was with him. And an angel came to set Paul free, but the, the prisoner, the warden of the prison, seeing he woke up because it was an earthquake. The, uh, the angel used the earthquake to shake it, shake it all, loosen all of the uh, the chains that bind him and opened up the prison doors. But the seller, the, the chief warden, woke up and seen all the doors was open and he like, man. Man, when my master find out, he going to kill me. So he picked up his sword and he was about to plunge it into his own body. But then Saul sit there and he said, nah, here I am. Here I am. We still here. You know what I'm saying? We still here. So I don't understand why people commit suicide, but it's only because they being oppressed by the devil. So if you haven't, I pray for you every night. But if you haven't thoughts of suicide, just know that you need to let God in your life and you won't have that oppression on you. You being oppressed by the devil. You being oppressed. He came, he comes to oppress us, but he came to oppress you. Now you want to give up on the blessing that God gave you. And it's the most beautiful thing that all of us can have. And and that is life that is life family so think let him into your life now i gotta go ahead and get up off of here because i still got a lot of work to do for today but it has been a blessing to sit here and and conversate with you and y'all for y'all to listen y'all been with me i thank y'all you know what I'm saying make sure you have one for your boy make sure you have a peaceful weekend you know what I'm saying god willing y'all see me sooner than you think you know what I'm saying and we'll be right back next week because the father is good so let him into your life you need to lean on jesus for he lives family he lives y'all make sure y'all have a peaceful blessed filled weekend respect your father take time to love your father take time to submit to your father take time to listen to him you know what I'm saying? pick up his word and read it you know what i'm saying get it down in you okay this has been your brother jehoshaphat y'all make sure y'all have a peaceful blessed filled sabbath make sure you have one for your boy this has been your brother jehoshaphat peace and blessings be upon you in jesus christ's name for he lives family and he loves you let him in